Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Game Zone Quick Hot Fix. This is How to Train a Speedrunner, uh, and we have PMC Trilogy here tonight, going to be teaching us true crime New York City. How are you doing tonight, PMC? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. Uh, do you have uh, anything you want to talk about, kind of before we jump into the game, or do you want to just jump right into it? Uh, what is it? You know, there's a few, you few prefatory statements. I imagine some. I feel like a lot of people have probably heard of this game. But maybe they don't quite understand what the deal with it is, uh, yep. and so I'm, I'll give a little bit of a preface because I I, I got to talk about the game real quick, and then also talk about how to play the game, which is very important. So first off, if if you don't know what this game was, this was you know late in the sixth gen, which is PS2, Xbox, GameCube, the era when of course GTA 3 had inspired many competitors. And Activision had uh, hired a company, Luxoflux, to put out this true crime series. Now, Streets of LA is the one before this. So if any of you all played Streets of LA, this is New York City is the sequel to true crime Streets of LA. And this game was released in December of 2005 for the consoles, for uh, Xbox, PS2, GameCube. PS2 is the original development version. The GameCube and Xbox port were handled by a company, and the PC port was handled by a different company, Aspire, who is actually still around today. You've, uh, Aspire, ASPYR, they are still involved in things. So, uh, yeah, so this is the second second true crime game. I already answered a question. I anticipated a question in <laughs> chat. I got him. I got him. So, yeah, so this is the second game. This is the one that... Some people will say killed the series, uh, I guess. Uh, some people might... Be, might be in chat ready to point out that at one point Sleeping Dogs was going to be a true crime game. That was a different developer and that was like five years later. So related nominally, but like not really meaningfully related. So anyway, that's the, that's the setting. We're going to be playing as you can probably, I, I, is, I don't know if, is the game feed visible? Game feed's visible, yeah. Okay. So as you can probably tell from that, we're going to be playing the PC version. So that you can see the mouse on 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 the screen. The PC version is what we're going to be playing. This is the version that came out in March 2006. The uh, PC version is the fastest version. Part of that's because of loads. Part of that's for some other reasons that we're going to get into. There are some uh, interesting factors to playing the PC version. First off, this unfortunately is not available in any digital distribution. Uh, I would love for I would love for Activision Blizzard to do that. I don't think they're going to do that. So you have to figure out how to source it on your own. And then the other part of it is uh, that there, as I said, there are complications. One of those complications is that the mouse input is borked. Uh, there are two things, there are two ways to fix the mouse input. One of those is is you can jack up your DPI to like 9,000 and that will fix it. Or you can set your polling rate <laughs> to, uh, to eight milliseconds. You can drop your polling rate. And typically polling rate uh, now is like one millisecond. Drop it down. Uh, that's what I'm doing. That makes the mouse control very fluid. This is a common problem for people playing the game. Uh, if you have a pad plugged in, it will break the controls on the map screen. So do not attempt to play this with a <laughs> with a pad plugged in. Um, and then I also am on the screen because I wanted to talk briefly just to give you an idea that this control scheme is not within the game remappable. I'm sure you could use a utility rem to remap it. I am going to be playing with default controls because at this point, that is how I have learned the game. That is how I know the game. I will address a lot of these issues as we get to them. The most important thing to point out looking at this screen is that to do punches, to do melee attacks, you have to hold down control and then click mouse buttons. So that is... Interesting. You know, yeah. Or as an alternative, as a treat, you could just press a single button on the numpad. As I, look, I always say, if you're not using numpad in your speed run, you're not really gaming, which is why I'm, I'm always appalled whenever I see people with keyboards that don't have numpads, but I guess that's just the sort of, the sort of video games that, that I like to play. Yeah. That, that, might, that sure. one might be on me. Uh, that one might be on me. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, another important uh, point. Let's, uh, we actually get around the menus here for a bit. So I talked about controls. I will talk, obviously, more about controls as we play the game. Another important thing for speed running is in the volume mix. Uh, voice volume is set to 0%. Now, this isn't just because like I don't like the, the voice volume or something like that. The reason I have the voice volume set to, <laughs> to 0, and this works in all versions of the game. This is not a PC port-only thing. 
uh, it just skips the voice lines, uh, which has a number of applications. Uh, it makes unskippable cutscenes much faster. Uh, it also speeds up a mechanic called interrogation. So uh, I you will that will become immediately obvious when I get to the first interrogation. I'll point it out again then. But bottom line, this setting saves about eight minutes over the course of the run. Eight minutes over the course of an hour long run. So that is, uh, you know, that that is that is what it is. Uh, in that case, I think we are about ready to get into it. I should mention, I I am I have the the gory honor of being the uh, the the world record holder of this game, uh, which is uh, the top time is fifty two fifty four. I have also completed speed runs of this game on every single console. I have done runs on PS two, GameCube, and Xbox. Uh, I do not recommend playing the GameCube version. Uh, also, <laughs> like, there is a, if you really want a good laugh, uh, look up the uh, Dolphin Progress report on True Crime New York City. Uh, that was like from like last year. Uh, they actually tell you do not play True Crime New York City on <laughs> on Dolphin or on hardware. <laughs> so, um, That's you know, yeah, good times, good times. But let's get, let's go ahead and get into it so I can start explaining things. Of course, uh, this is True Crime New York City on PMC. This is how to train a speedrunner. Uh, so I I do have chat open. Whenever you see me looking over here, I am I'm looking at chat, and I'm ready to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. It is uh it is oh no I did I hit new game I must have hit save game. There you go. Come on. There you go. This, obviously this is the old style New York license plate. Much better than the ones they have currently. All right, it is Christmas 2005. Ooh. All right, wait a second. All right, here we go. Christmas 2005, and we are enjoying ourselves, and we are about to... So, okay, so first thing we got to learn, first thing we got to learn is handling out-of-bounds stuff. The, the bread and butter of this game is flipping out-of-bounds, and the best way to do that, there's two ways to do that. One way to do that is to strafe to the right and shoot fire. Uh, and that, you're gonna see me throughout the game firing constantly to go faster indoors. But that's the thing, we're gonna hop out of here, fall out of bounds. The, there's another use for that I'll explain later. And then we're gonna come in bounds here. Coming in bounds here is important. The, the end room is right over here. But we're coming in bounds here to spawn these guys. A note about auto aim in this game. There is auto aim. You hold down for PC, left shift. As you can see, I'm already auto aiming onto these guys. Like if I turn around here, I'm gonna immediately move my mouse. So again, auto aim locks you right on. You just whip the mouse around and you just shoot everyone. And there you go. And that's the end of the tutorial. Five years have passed and it is time to uh, do some extra. We're gonna learn how to be a cop. This is gonna be really, really useful and important. And we're gonna learn a lot about <laughs> what, what it takes. So you remember what I said earlier about melee? There's two ways to do melee. Either you can do numpad seven to do light attacks, or you can do control left click to do light attacks. Uh, I'm typically going to be opting for the mouse stuff whenever. Uh, so I'm going to do this is this is control left click, got hit three times. Heavy attack, control right click. This is called a radial. This is an attack that knocks people down. I'm going to do control left click right click. Uh, and important, that one can be fussy sometimes. Like you can like do it from too far away and it, it won't quite work. And then lastly, this is a directional attack. So here you have to do control, shift, and a direction. And then, then click. So I'm going to do control, shift, A, and then that does it correctly in one go. A reminder, this is a, this is a live tutorial. If you have any questions at all, I'm happy to answer them. Oh, I got one question. Have I have I tried speedrunning Streets of LA? I have not actually. I've not actually uh, played Streets of LA yet. I am thinking about it though. Uh, a note about uh, so okay, so here there is no control plus click option to interact with this guy. So I have to take my right hand and <laughs> go all the way over to my numpad. Uh, and do plus. A note about this: if I do running plus, this is this is not going to be. I'm gonna get a tackle. 
So wait, actually, let me. All right, uh, I'm gonna just demonstrate. So that was that was the intended thing. That was the grab. Whereas if I do this while I am, I get this motion, and so that will not complete the tutorial. Right now, what we're doing, we're doing a, uh, you know, we're doing a, a physical attack tutorial. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna complete enough of the physical attack tutorial to in order to progress. And then we're gonna clip out of bounds and go straight to the end. Cause at this point, we have a passing grade and that's all we want. We're speedrunners, right? We don't wanna, we don't wanna deal with this. This is <laughs> anything more than a passing grade is strictly unnecessary. Uh, what is so bad about the, the GameCube port? Uh, GameCube port has a lot of performance issues. GameCube port also can't do some important skips. I'll actually point those out. Uh, as we're as we're going through, uh, I mean, Control Shift A is just like using Emacs, and if you're not using Emacs, you're not really programming, is is what I always say. All right, so now we're in the uh, the gun control portion of the level. We're gonna learn how to use a gun. Uh, same thing I said before. You, you just hit Shift, left Shift, and you you uh, lock on. You gotta shoot the targets. A note about the targets: the targets are a bit of RNG. Uh, the targets if will either break right away or they'll spin. Uh, and if they spin, you're just out of luck. Uh, you have to do a cover here. I always get out of cover right away. And then, yeah, so there, because it broke right away, I was able to just kind of get out and that's it. Uh, we also have to learn how to use a grenade. Uh, you just pick the grenade up uh, and then throw, throw. Uh, an important thing here, uh, this is a, a good point to mention that this is a game that will get upset with you if you try to spam inputs in certain places. And so right there, if you were spamming attack while you were picking up the grenade, uh, it would actually just soft lock the mission. So you gotta be, you gotta be <laughs> careful about stuff like that. All right. I mentioned before that one of the types of uh, going out of bounds you can do, there's, there's two ways, right? One, the one I showed off at the very beginning of the game was going sideways and attacking. We're always going to be clipping out of bounds by going sideways into a corner. The other way to go out of bounds, if you don't have an opponent around, like no one to lock onto, you hold down the auto aim button and then run to your side. And then this is the way, this is probably the, the like the hardest corner that we do in the speed run in terms of trying to get out of bounds. So, uh, but yeah, and there we go. And now we, again, same idea as the previous level. We did enough to pass the shooting test and then we went to the end of the shooting test and now we get the driving test in the giant driving cavern. Same idea here. We're gonna we're gonna turn on our siren, which is gonna basically cause us to pass a few of the driving tests. And then we're gonna drive to the end and pretty much ignore things. Um, drive, we, compared to a GTA speed run, True Crime New York City is like way easier to get into because frankly, there's a lot less driving. If you might not know it from watching GTA speedruns, but like the really the thing that really separates like good runners from bad runners in that in that series is the driving. Uh, it is very very challenging to get good at. Uh, True Crime New York City, we're not going to do that much driving. We're we're we're, we're going to have like two sections of driving after this, uh, three sections, but it's pretty much pretty much good. All right, uh, we will hit this baby carriage for good luck. I mean, it's not actually required, but I always do it. So now we are heading out. The game is going to try to give us some some final tutorial knowledge uh, before we go out for the street test. Uh, it's going to try and teach us about like if you if you went over here, this would be where you learn about clothes. This would be where you learn about getting cars out of the the garage. But again, we're gonna use the shift, the auto aim out of bounds. I'm tapping side there. That's why we get this stutter motion. And then right here, right past this line where yeah, the two lines meet, you can just jump in back in bounds and that activates the end of the mission. So my guess uh, in terms, uh, so the this speed run, uh, the, the record time is 52.54. My expectation is that I'm probably gonna be like, you know, I don't know, maybe like two hours of this. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Obviously, if people have questions, I'm I'm happy to help folks. Uh, a common question I get when I'm doing this is, why are you facing the camera the other direction? Uh, and the reason for that is not to save frames. The reason for that is uh, to prevent traffic from spawning in front of us. Uh, generally speaking, traffic will not spawn uh, as long as you're looking the other way. Though so that makes it pretty <laughs> pretty true. It's just like real New York City. 
If you don't, if you don't look, the traffic isn't there. Uh, diagonal running does not make you run faster than this. There are, uh, there is something that we're going to do to make ourselves run faster, and I'll point that out once we get to the first indoor level. All right, so we got the the street test now. This is going to be a lot of pressing weird buttons on the keyboard. Uh, this is all numpad plus to do this. This last guy could be kind of hard to arrest. I spam WASD in order to get that arrest prompt to show up. I open the trunk with ease. All right, so this is all going to be weird here. We got to flash our badge and then fire a warning shot. So we're going to press Q to flash our badge, page up to switch to our pistol, Q to fire a warning shot, page down, you put away the pistol, and then we're going to run behind each of these guys. So you saw that was pretty quick, right? If I run up to this guy, I would have to sit through that whole turning around animation. But instead, go behind him, instant, instant arrest. Yeah, it is very similar to uh, running cars and spawning in like GTA. Flash the badge to get this guy to pop out of his car. And off we go. Uh, chasing down the last suspect who crashed his car, closes the car door that isn't there. And then you just kind of, oop, there you go. Just, <laughs> the, the man can't get off the sidewalk. He he refuses to to commit the fake crime of jaywalking. And then you, you have to tackle him before you can arrest him. Uh, the, the game requires you to do it in that order. But yeah, I'm trying to say all these keybinds out loud. You know, if, if anyone comes along and finds this and they're like, oh my God, how do I flash my badge or fire a warning shot or, or do any of these things? Um, even if you're looking at that, that control screen, like it might not be obvious. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps, helps them out. My favorite, favorite snack item. That's a, that's a hard question. I don't know. Um, like a good like like a snack crepe or something or like some like strawberry and like truffle chocolates i don't know something fancy i'm feeling fancy okay we got a weird trick here if you're playing on gamecube you can't do this I, and i apologize the gamecube as a console uh the saving does not work saves are bad like that's just true of gamecube generally it is specifically true on this game so we're gonna make a save we're gonna instantly load that save we're gonna exit uh, are there other soft locks to be aware of? Absolutely. I will try to remember to say as many of them as possible. Then I'm going to load the game again. Ordinarily, what's supposed to be going on here is we're supposed to do a random city crime, which is just like, you know, some random crime. Someone stole a car or there's like a fight breaking out. And we have to deal with that before we can continue with the main story. However, uh, we were able to... We, <laughs> we were able to... Uh, abuse the, uh, the game's scripting to make it panic and allow us to progress to the next mission. We also, uh, don't worry, we'll have plenty of time to talk about what I was just doing, which is that this game has taxi fast travel. It works just like GTA 4 uh, tax tra uh, uh, fast travel in that you just get in a taxi and you go to a particular destination. Uh, yes, so the, that saving tech does work on Xbox and PS2. Just to, just to confirm. What was the first video game I did a speedrun for? Just Cause 3. Well, so... The, you know, license plate only has got seven characters on it. So, you know, couldn't fit the G. Yeah. Yeah, it's close, right? You know, it's gotta work with what you have. Uh, yellow cars should be illegal because I think they're taxis and they're not. Problem is, when you see a taxi... Yeah, I know. <laughs> when you see a taxi at a distance... Uh, the, you know, like the little placard on top that says taxi doesn't spawn in right away. And then, oh, uh, then I just despawned one, I'm pretty sure. All right, welcome. See, this is why no one seriously speedruns this game. This is because you end up spending forever uh, trying to get taxis. And like, we're going we're gonna to do this like 20 times in the game. <laughs> just to be clear, this is like a major, major component of playing this game is taxi RNG. Uh, if, you, if you thought the, the little spinning ar target RNG in the uh, the shooting target level was bad, this is worse. So again, one thing I should note about firing the gun is that the left click can be uh, sort of inconsistent for shooting. Sometimes it just won't shoot. 
So I often use shift plus F to do the shooting. So right now I'm like holding down shift and whipping around my mouse button and pressing F to shoot. That is how I'm how I'm doing all this. Uh, in most levels, we have our pistol, which has infinite ammo. And that is going to be useful for reasons. Oh, that guy actually. OK, so ordinarily right there, I would pick up a assault rifle. Unfortunately, the assault rifle fell out. And so, oh, I might die here anyway. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> that can happen. I get to explain it again. How did I get into speedrunning this game? Uh, so I, uh, you know, I'm I'm a big fan and friend of one KZ Fru, who some of y'all might know as a GTA series speedrunner, and he was running this game because he had picked it up from some speed friends, uh, in particular the uh, the moderators for this game, uh, F and Cat. Shout outs to them. F F is really the person who put a lot of work into finding the tech for this game. Uh, when I say tech, I mean like all the skips and the sequence breaks. Uh, so really, you know, credit credit goes to him. He's still the moderator for this game. So shout outs, shout outs to F indeed. Uh, oh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> a note about ladders. Uh, okay, so you'll know you'll notice that I can do just like I use them for going out of bounds. When you walk forward, you have like a normal speed. Now, if I shoot my gun and walk forward, I'm a little faster. And the same thing applies if I hold down auto aim and walk. Like if I get into the aiming aiming gesture. So here, if I if I go into auto aim and then climb a ladder right after starting the aim, my ladder climb is way faster. Uh, that's useful here. There are longer ladders later in the game where that's even going to be even more useful. Uh, so this is you know this is like an open world open world game and. Uh, it's very mission based. We're going to be going from the, the structure of this game. We did the intro act and now we are on our first crime family. There are four crime families uh, and we are going to each crime family to figure out who the, who the corrupt cop is. When we went to the FBI garage, the FBI agent told us that there is a crooked cop and we have to figure out who that crooked cop is. And so we are roughing up four major crime families in the city, going from criminal to criminal within the family in order to learn who the identity of the crooked cop is. That's the, I think that's the lore. I've never actually played this game casually. So, but I think that's the lore. All right. Life is going to come at you fast right here. I'm going to press enter to skip this cutscene and immediately hit numpad five. Numpad five goes into precision aim, which I will then shoot the messenger off the motorcycle. I fire warning shots in order to get cars to stop, to not um, run this guy over. Cause there's a risk that once I start shooting, they'll run this guy over. And then I go into precision aim and I shoot when the cursor is blue on the man's knee. That's a good shot to the knee as opposed to a bad shot to the knee. This is the interrogation mechanic I talked about before. We're going to come back to this interrogation mechanic again soon. So we'll have plenty of opportunity to address that. What just happened. That's going to repeat a bunch though. And that's, that's always going to be the same. It was more important there to get the, uh, you know, to, to get, what was going on with chasing the messenger. That can be pretty, that can be pretty tricky, especially if like there's a, a pedestrian in your way or, you know, any one of a number of things can happen there. Uh, uh, yes, I did actually run. I did run just cause three at AGDQ 2021. It was a lot of fun. I did the, I did the sky fortress run. It was a good time. All right. So we're continuing on here. Uh, now we're going to like the first major indoor level where we can get to talk a bit more about, about skips and the consequence of them. Uh, I think you can just pull people out of the, out of the car, but it's like always easier just to flash your badge and make them go out. So there from the beginning of the level, I, you know, you begin the level over here. You can immediately go to this corner, pop out of bounds, popping out of bounds is going to sequence break this level. And we're gonna run around to the right and come in here, which allows us to avoid some some sequences. Now, the consequence of doing this is gonna become obvious soon. Uh, I mentioned before that shooting makes you enter a run and gun state. So I'm gonna keep firing my pistol with infinite ammo in order to move faster. This door should be closed, but because I clipped out of bounds, the door's open. So I can just go straight to the end of the level. That laser will kill you. It will make explosives go off, bad time. Uh, this is Cold Beer Man. He has eight letters and we have to shoot them down. 
Thankfully, we have an AK. This is pretty straightforward. This is just intended. No real, real speed tech here. Ideally, you can get as many letters as possible uh, with the AK, and then, you know, finish off the remaining, remaining ones with the pistol. Uh, a note there, it is always good before doing an interrogation to switch off the pistol using like the normal page up, page down. Doing that uh, just saves a little bit of time because otherwise you, you do a longer animation. Okay, so interrogations. The idea here is that I'm pressing numpad and a uh, numpad seven and numpad nine in order to get the bar there to go into the middle, right? That's pretty visually obvious. Um, when I finish the, when I get the third exclamation point, uh, you always want to press numpad plus instead of pressing the, the aggressive arrest. Doing numpad plus, uh, just arrests them, like puts them in handcuffs. That animation is faster than the aggressive animation. And so that's the way, the way you want to go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did kind of burn Just Cause 4 in that run. I, I felt a little bad about that, but it was also kind of... I did later speedrun Just Cause 4. For the record, I did speedrun that game after making that quip during, during, <laughs> during a Genie Q event. So, um, you know, shout out to Just Cause 4. Once again, we're waiting for taxis. Oh, wow, red light in our favor. This is going to be the same. The, the taxi thing's just going to happen every time. There's, there's no avoiding it. When it comes to using the map there, uh, using, you want to use W and S to go up and down and then use the mouse to go left and right. Like, you don't have to do it that way, but I think that's the fastest way to do it. When you're outside, when you're, uh, so like when you're on the map, right? When you're on the open world map, shooting does not make you go faster, but again, inside, you just pull out your pistol, your infinite ammo pistol. You're not going to have the infinite ammo pistol on every level, but, you know, for the ones where you have it, this is pretty much going to be what you want to do. So, uh, if you're curious about how long this run takes normally, this run would be, uh, the like, the top time is like 50 to 54. I would, usually marathon estimates I give for this are an hour. Obviously, this is a this is a live tutorial, so it's gonna be a little longer than that. But if you're curious how long this normally takes, I would say like you know you're a top runner if you're sub hour, is how I would put it. So here I'm picking up a 50. 50 is useful because it's a one shot kill, and we, at this point we still have about five more guys to deal with, or six more. So that's good. A nice thing about uh, having a pickup weapon is that I will. Uh, I will just drop it when I when I go to arrest this guy. So the 50 will just pop out of my hand. Whoop. <laughs> That's a pretty short animation. I don't have to worry about putting that down. Uh, do I use the actual numpad? Yes. I absolutely use the numpad. 100%. I am I I've I have no third party. You cannot remap the controls within the game, and I am not using any sort of third party utility to uh to rebind externally. So yes. Hit enter twice. And then say no here. Task. So a task in True Crime New York City refers to a side mission that you can do. So there are certain circumstances where the game will permit you to fail a mission. And when you do that, you have the option to discover how to get to the next mission beyond the failed mission by doing an informant task. That's going to be slow, right? So it, for speedrun purposes, for any percent, you will never do a task. Do I use any sort of wrapper to run this game properly? Actually, no. I, I, yeah, no, this, this just kind of runs. Uh, I'm not using DXW and D. I'm not using DG Voodoo 2. It, it just, uh, it, it just works. Folks, True Crime New York City, it just works. Anyway, uh, there is a speed run called All Major Missions, which does all the tasks. Uh, I have done a run of it and I don't recommend it. The tasks are all very boring compared to the, the main story missions. I'm not a fan of them. But if you really want to, you can become the third person to ever do a speedrun of that category. All right. So when I go in here, I'm going to be hitting enter to skip a cutscene. At the same time, I'm going to be mashing numpad plus to, uh, to break out of a straitjacket. And then I need to do heavy punch combo. Okay, so this is 
Control right click. A three punch combo takes these guys down. If one of them starts, so let's say this guy started blocking, right? What you can do is you can grab him out of the block. Uh, I was like, come on, I want you to try to demonstrate something, bro. And then you can do a control right click to do a heavy punch combo off of the grab. Now, at this point, what the game wants you to do is to go up to there. Uh, a note about console versions. Most of everything that I've shown y'all works on PS2 and Xbox. However, however, uh, some of these clips do not work on GameCube because GameCube GameCube runs really, really poorly. I'm usually not the sort of person to talk about frame rate. The frame rate on the GameCube version is really bad. And I think it's so bad that it actually prevents clipping out of bounds in some circumstances. This is one of those circumstances. So this clip I've not been able to reproduce on GameCube. So if you're playing on GameCube, good luck with that. If you're playing on PC, do a normal shift and, you know, mash D to get out of bounds. Uh, that was Beetlejuice, not Meatloaf, but close. So we clip out of bounds there, run around this structure and then run back in here. There's a boss to this level and we need a weapon to defeat that boss. So we're going to pop back in bounds here and then attack this guy. He drops this syringe. The syringe is something that causes enemies to immediately lose all stamina. But back out of bounds, uh, run forward, listen closely here. So that was a windows noise, which is which is interesting. What do you do here? Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to pause for a second just to explain the the sequence there. The sequence there is that that man has like a like a beanbag shotgun. And so when you walk in the door, he's loading a shot and he takes one shot. So what I did was I walked, I walked to the right. I just stepped to the right. I held down shift so that I locked onto him. And then when you, when you do a shift left click and you're, you're holding something. So in this case, I was holding the syringe. Uh, it throws the, it, it throws the held item at the enemy. So I threw the syringe at the doctor <laughs> Uh, the syringe hit him. It caused him to lose all stamina. When an enemy is without stamina, you can one hit KO them by mashing uh, light punch and heavy punch. Rather than do control left click, right click, it's easier to do uh, numpad seven, numpad nine. So again, I threw the syringe. I ran up to him. I mashed numpad seven, numpad nine. And, and then we one hit KO'd him off, off of that particular maneuver. Also, I see Jade Star talking about the Windows noise, uh, and that is all correct information. The Windows noise is not just in the PC version of the game. That same noise appears on the Xbox and GameCube versions of the game. Uh, the, the PS2 version, which is the original development version of the game, has the correct noise. Well, the PS2 version, it would be, it would be more correct to say that the Xbox, GameCube, and PC versions broke it rather than that the PS2 fixed it, because the PS2 was right from the start. All right, anyway, a small man pops out and unlocks the door for us, and we exit. Uh, so this is one of the timed driving sequences in the game. What that means is that we can't take a taxi. We have to get a car. I Typically, the fastest car that we can get is going to be a cop car, uh, but if you see a car that is faster, you can go ahead and grab it. Uh, the fastest vehicle to grab is a sports bike. Sports bike is um, just incredibly fast. Uh, dangerous, but you know, fast. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, but now I'm just gonna drive with the camera facing the other way. Uh, again, the camera is faced the other way. You hold down numpad plus to do this. So numpad plus. And uh, it's so that traffic doesn't spawn in front of you. Uh, the map in this game does model Manhattan pretty well. So it is, in fact, a grid. Uh, so it's pretty easy to drive in a straight line. It's uh, pretty trivial. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, once we get to Broadway, go ahead, hang a right, and then we're off to the opera, which is the finale of uh, the Magdalena Cartel, which is the first crime family that we're dealing with here. 
Now, in this first part, I mentioned before that when you go out of bounds and you're attacking, that was actually a great example. I'm glad I showed that. So when you go out of bounds and you're attacking, and this is true of shooting a gun, this is also true of melee, uh, if you're able to continue that attack animation while you're falling out of bounds, it will prevent all fall damage. That's useful there because it prevents us from falling and spending time in an animation where we take damage. Uh, it's going to be essential later on. So, that'll come back. Anyway, once we get out of bounds, we walk over to this boat. This boat is the boss of the level. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and just shoot this boat until the gas canister uh, in the front of it explodes. Uh, but unfortunately, this game still has a script that needs to execute for the, this level. So we walk under the stage to start the script and come back here. And then we have to kill a bunch of guys. I've mentioned several times that there's auto aim. You hold down shift. Uh, you can just shoot. Like you'll see again, my camera will just whip to people. And every time that happens, every time you see plus three career, someone has died. Uh, <laughs> so, and then once the music changes, uh, you know we're good. So that's it. Okay, this screen, this screen is very important. This is typically in this game, when you die, you're given the opportunity to replay the mission instantly. That you, We saw that once earlier because I died during uh, during Teresa's Dare, uh, which is the, like the first mission of the Magdalena Cartel. Here, if you mess this up, your your run is your run is uncomfortable. Like you can still finish the game, of course, but uh, it used to be the case that we did the we did the order of the game. Uh, we used to do it: uh, Shadow Tong, Palermo Mob, then Presidents Club. What this changes about the game is how much health enemies have and what weapons enemies have. What I'm going to do now is actually do Palermo Mob, Shadow Tongue, then President's Club. And the advantage to that is going to be mostly be that there's a few uh, health bars and amounts of damage that I can deal that line up more nicely on Palermo Mob. Uh, but yeah, if you see older runs of this game, you'll see that a lot of runners will do Shadow Tongue, Mob, then Club. Here, you know, again, this is, this is the new route. Uh, at this point, I think only like, I want to say only two or three runners have done this route because uh, it's, it's something more recent, like in the past yeah, like year, year and a half. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it. Let's, so yeah, so the structure of the game, we did the Magdalena Cartel and now we're going to do uh, the next crime family. And you'll, you'll never believe that, that our first location to get a lead for, <laughs> for, for the mob is, of course, uh, an Italian restaurant. So, you know. Get your, uh, get your postables out. The taxi thing never stops. Like it, it's, you, you can't grind this game. It's <laughs> really frustrating. Uh, you just sort of have to let it happen. Just let it wash over you. So this is going to be a big melee sequence. I'm going to come out here with, uh, with doing the heavy punches. Once I kill this first guy, the second guy is going to try to run for the door, but he's also not going to block. So if I can if I can hit him with a heavy punch combo as he's running for the door after his first buddy goes down, then like he's pretty much free money. All right, so this kitchen fight. There are, uh, there are a few options here that I can do. I'm going to try and demonstrate both of the options. One of those, and this is what I like to do, is to grab this, grab this guy, and then do a heavy punch combo in a grab with the weapon. So that's pretty good, right? Like, that's pretty effective. Another way to do this is if I can grab this guy, I can then do, oh, I can then insta-kill him by putting him in the freezer, <laughs> which is kind of savage. Uh, but if you're able to grab him and get him face the right direction, yeah, there he is. Look at look at the poor guy. Damn, that's rough. Uh, so those are kind of your two options for dealing with those guys quickly. I find that uh, grabbing them with the, uh, with the weapon is just like, much more reliable than trying to get them to face the right direction. So I usually go for that option. Either way is fine. Uh, you know, certainly getting that quick animation if you have them facing the right direction in the grab is very excellent. And then we, and then we, we leave without paying our bill. All 
All right, yeah, so that, that's like a, that mission, especially when you get comfortable with doing all of the out of bounds clips, like a lot of what this run will come down to is taxi RNG and melee fights. So being able to do a fight like the restaurant clean is going to be something to really like iron out as you play more of this. All right, this one is way north. Like, I, I, so when I was playing this game the other night, someone asked like, hey, hey PMC, is it really worth it? always use taxis isn't there ever a time where you can just drive and like here's the thing we're we're down here on the lower east side and we got to get all the way up to washington heights and those blocks are all huge so the answer is like almost always like you just always go taxi the taxi never stops this is a very short level we're going to two out of bound out of bounds clips i'm gonna go to the right just straight to the right didn't press anything else all out of bounds there so that's an example of me not correctly uh doing the attack animation while falling out of bounds thankfully that doesn't kill you you can just sort of survive it and you got the blood in your feet and you're good then you run over to this corner do the same thing on your right side look for i always whenever I, when i pop out of here i always look for these uh these water drops and then run towards them and this this wall will pop into existence, and then the exit of the level is this door right here. Yeah, I should mention that we are going to get the good cop ending. Uh, there is a risk in this game. Actually, let me just pause and talk about this. There is a risk in this game that if you run over too many uh, pedestrians or cops or whoever, you can get enough bad cop points to activate the bad cop ending. The bad cop ending is slow because there is an extra fight. So you just do not, you do not want to do that. That is never a good thing. Uh, so it is, yeah, you don't, you don't want that to happen. Is money ever a concern during the run? No, it is not. You, you, you're always good. You start, taxis barely cost anything. Uh, and you start with like a thousand bucks. And so you're, you're pretty much set for all that. And that you don't need money for anything else. All right. So anyway, Getting in this car is kind of difficult. I'm actually going to mention that real quick. Uh, when you're going up to a car like that, you generally want to try and place yourself right at the the back the back edge of the driver's side door. If you go up to a car that you're trying to drive and you are too far forward, it just won't do anything. Or if you're too far back, you will run around to the trunk and open the trunk to look for evidence which is deeply unhelpful when you're trying to drive the car so you can chase someone. You don't, you don't want to do that. Uh, you don't, you don't want to do that. So you want to get, you run over this car. This is actually a pretty tightly timed mission, which is why I'm pausing and explaining things. Cause if you do not get in the car and move right away, you will lose this guy. Like you pretty much will just lose this guy right away. So anyway, we're chasing this guy. He's running away in the truck there. He actually has random patterns. His pattern is not set. Going this way is better though. If he makes a left turn, it's kind of more, more inconvenient. We're going to try and do a pit maneuver on him. Pit maneuver, uh, while he's driving forward, you just want to slap one of his rear <laughs> wheel wells and he just spins out of control. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, and then you run up, you hit E to pull him out. You got to give him a nice little uh, uh, tap to the knee with the blue the blue marker. Ideally, you can do it while he's still laying on the ground. But if he gets up, when you activate the the, the pre precision shot, you do get a moment of, of slow-mo. So you can use it. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, the pit maneuver is just that easy. Uh, the, the essential ingredients to a pit maneuver are that the car you're trying to pit maneuver is moving and that you hit him with the front of your car in either like the left or right rear side. As long as the, like the most, the most difficult part of that is that the car you're chasing keeps moving because it will happen very frequently that that car will just bump in the traffic stop. And then if you hit a stopped car, it doesn't spin out. So you really, <laughs> you really got to hope he keeps moving and then tap them like that because it doesn't take much of a tap. Like it is, it is a very light tap in the physics of the game. But then you're good. Then you pit maneuver and pull them out, shoot him in the knee, the good way, and then interrogate him. And then he tells you where to go next. And then you, and then then once again, 
extra crime in New York City and you got to get a taxi. So generally with a lot of these taxi trips, uh, I've had to walk after the taxi to get into the mission. This actually drops me straight into the marker, this one. Okay, so I mentioned melee fights can be the thing that make it the difference in a lot of uh, like a lot of like really grinding out top times in this. So I'm going to I'm going to point out here that one of the things that we want to do is we want to try and like bait her into like changing what she's doing because her first instinct is going to be to melee me. It's going to be to, to do a throw. These blue dumbbells, when thrown, do a full life bar of damage because we're doing Palermo mob now instead of later. So that's this is the reason why we're doing this the things in this order uh, is because we're able to use those four, the, the set of four blue dumbbells. Obviously, we only need three, but you know sometimes you miss uh, in order to knock out Candy and her two goons. Uh, and then we just gotta chase Candy. This is just a scripted thing that we have to go through. Uh, you cannot chase her down. You cannot tackle her. You just have to let her walk through this uh, and then and then interrogate her. Uh, Oh, I wasn't close. It's actually been years. So that's what happens if you fail. <laughs> it's It's been years since that happened to me. That's funny. All right. Well, anyway, there you go. You got to stay close to her, I guess. I guess I wasn't close enough. Popping off too much with tutorials. Anyway, same idea. Hit him with the blue. That guy's probably going to try and tackle me, but we got him. Um, I saw someone mention the animation speed in chat. So... I mentioned earlier that PC is the fastest version of this game. That is true. Some of that's load times, but a lot of it is the animation speed. If you look at footage of what I'm doing right now versus footage of the game on any console, PS2, Xbox, or GameCube, uh, you'll notice that my running and shooting animations are sped up, and they are. I don't know why. That's just how the PC port is. And of course, you know, no surprise, that means it's faster. Yeah, you gotta let her get to the end of the track, and then... Uh, a note about the interrogation. Sometimes, when you're going through your interrogation, if you're mashing uh, numpad 7, if you get the, uh, the indicator to go above the middle before it spawns in, when you bring it back down to the middle point, you can actually get a, a double exclamation point on your first exclamation point. Uh, it's like a small little time save. It happens pretty infrequently, but you know, still, still useful. Still, still something that you, you like to take advantage of when you can. Interrogations are not something you're typically gonna lose too much time on, but of course, it's always, always nice to have a fast one, or at least as fast as possible. As I mentioned before, uh, there are supposed to be voice lines playing. Uh, if you, if you've come in late and you're like, "Wow, PMC, those, <laughs> those, those interrogations sure do seem messed up." The answer is they are messed up because in the uh, in the voice volume, which I will show right now while I'm talking about it, uh, here's the audio mix, and I have voices set to zero. And so that skips all of the voice lines, which is like generally useful, but is specifically useful because of those interrogations. So what you're seeing when I when I do that mini game is you're seeing an interrogation sans all of the dialogue. All of the voice lines are just skipped. Like not not just muted, not just silenced, but skipped. <laughs> so makes it uh makes it a pretty pretty quick time. Alright. Once again, pretty typical stuff here. Again, the way we go out of bounds is we actually let me I'll just demonstrate it again real real quick. Oh well, no, I'll do it over here. So again, we always want to go sideways into a corner either firing her gun or using auto aim. Uh, I don't need to use that room again because we're gonna go over here. This is actually this. So someone asked earlier, is there a risk of soft lock in this game? Are there other soft locks? The answer is absolutely. You need to jump into this elevator before pressing E. If you can activate the elevator without being inside it, that will soft lock the game. <laughs> do, do not do that. So jump into the elevator, hit E, then hit enter to select the floor. And then once you've moved to the next level, clip out of bounds again. Uh, we, need, we need to come back in bounds here because it's going to activate this enemy. And then we clip back out of bounds. Now we've activated the sequence. Uh, just like the opera level, 
we're going to kill guys uh, from out of bounds. Every time you see plus three career, a man has died. We need to kill four guys. Once we kill four guys, we pop in here and say, hey, Tony. And we interrogate Tony. Thank you, Tim. All right, so we are almost, almost done now with the mob. Ordinarily, if you're doing runs, you would not be saving the game. I'm saving the game, so I'm mashing enter at every single one of those prompts. Uh, if you were speed running, you would just hit backspace once, uh, and that would be enough to, to get out of that save prompt, and that would be the fastest thing to do. All right, let's go to this. <laughs> Tower of Pizza. Where where could the mob possibly be? No idea. All right. So this this level is going to be mostly as intended. We're gonna do a few tricks to prevent enemy spawns. So we're gonna get to the top of the stairwell. We're not gonna walk through this door because that would activate an enemy spawn. What we are gonna do is clear this debris and then clip out of bounds. This this out of bounds is a little tricky because there's a risk that we could fall to our death. So you want to be clipping out of bounds, but you also want to be ready to jump. So there I clipped right through. Uh, if I had started falling, I would have hit jump and that would have enabled me to get to like climb up like he's doing all these animations. Here, same thing. I'm going to fire and then I'm going to do a jump over this. That's going to prevent another set of spawns. And then I'm going to check this guy for a gun. He's got a nice assault rifle. Love to see it. And then we're pretty much going to fight the rest of the level as intended. That man should be on top of the scaffolding, but he fell through. He just clipped out. Uh, there is explosive here. We can use to kill that guy. And then the rest of it, we auto aim. Three guys are going to try to get out of this elevator. Typically, only two of them succeed. <laughs> Uh, sometimes the elevator will despawn and that man will scream as he falls to his death. All right, I didn't hear it. So much like the other parts of this, once we get closer to the floor, the enemies will spawn and we'll be able to auto aim them through the floor. So I'm hitting shift and then bam, once, I, once it moves to a position, we know the enemy can die. Some of these boards have enemies on them which we can shoot to kill them. But yeah, same same deal. Once you once you move to an auto a position, you know you got a guy. You can watch their bodies vibrate on the scaffolding. The scaffolding is very perilous. Uh, if you destroy scaffolding with an explosive, it will just kill the guy on them. Oh yeah. Uh, shout outs to uh, to speed friend Tapioca who once clipped out of bounds in this elevator. Uh, there is no benefit to clipping out of bounds in this elevator. Don't do it. It'll soft lock the game. Spe speaking of warnings about soft locks, don't do it. It'll soft lock the game. Uh, this this whole section is really perilous because if you if you fall out of bounds if you fall off this elevator. Or if you just fall off, you'll die. Uh, this is one of the levels that's considered to have like not a not a bottom. There's a few of these. Uh, we'll we'll get some more later. But it is very possible for this boss to hit you and cause you to clip through the floor, and then you'll just die, and you'll have to replay the level from the beginning. So that's pretty sad. I would hate for that to happen. Uh, but yeah, pretty standard boss fight. Just shoot, crouch to avoid the beam. Uh, the pattern varies here. We're gonna get, so this is an easy pattern because he's not dropping the beam. Sometimes he'll drop the beam to the floor and sweep, and you have to jump over it. Uh, but this is a super easy pattern. You just crouch and he never hits you. Okay, important choice here. You actually need to select Shadow Tong. Doing President's Club, uh, doing Shadow Tong last can be kind of difficult because of the auto scroller in Shadow Tong. I'll get to that, you know, in, in like a mission or two. But it is, it is what it is. Uh, is the elevator move or is the building? Oh, I mean, I think the elevator moves. I think you just get because what happened. So if you had if you had clipped out of the elevator during that auto scroller sequence, what would have happened was you would just be stuck on whatever floor you got off on, and there'd be no, there'd be no way to get it to get back without just walking off the the floor and dying. Yeah, thank you. All 
All right. Time for time for probably one of the cooler skips. So this is one of the skips that was found later on. I, I noticed I mentioned earlier a lot of the skips were put together by F. Shout out to F. Uh, a few of the skips, like the city crime skip, where you do the save loads, and this particular one that I'm about to show off, were found by Skiller Terror. Credit to Skiller Terror, very good runner. Shout outs. Uh, so when we go in here, I'm going to skip the cutscene, and I'm going to run to a corner. And two, th one of two things are, is going to happen when I under that corner. Either I'm going to be able to do a auto aim out of bounds where I hold down shift and then slide sideways out of bounds, or I'm going to get tackled. And once the tackle ends, I'm going to roll out of bounds while prone on the floor. So it can go either, either way. So skip the cutscene, turn and run to this corner. So I got, I got tackled. This is usually what happens. And so now I'm just going to roll out of bounds. And that's it. That's really all you got to do. Typically, you're going to get tackled. In fact, I would almost rely on it. It's faster than doing the shift out of bounds method. Once you do that, this, this level is supposed to have three waves of enemies. But good news, uh, this is the boss of the third wave. So we can just kill this guy and it will end the level. So we're just going to we're just going to punch him, give him a heavy punch. So he's going to fall over. This woman is going to pop out of this coffin and run to the door. And that's going to activate the exits of the level. Easy peasy. So now we're going to get the first of our two auto scrollers in the game. Get the cutscene. Uh, again, auto aim and shoot is pretty much how you're going to want to do these. Uh, there's a few, uh, a few principles to keep in mind here. The, first off, there is a risk of death. So like generally speaking, you want to be on top of shooting enemies so they do not kill you. Uh, the next thing to be aware of is that there is a possibility of chain reaction explosions. Actually, I just did one right there. So that the guy who was driving that motorcycle got hit by the motorcycle in front of him exploding. When this happens to a motorcycle, you get a ghost motorcycle. When it happens to a car, the car just crashes. So now that this guy just lives with us. Uh, okay, import, import, oh, all right. There is also a risk of cars interfering with the auto scroller. And if that happens, you just lose time. It just, it just happens. Uh, the thing I was going to talk about is there is a car parked up here on the right. Uh, if you want to have a good time, just mash E while you're, while you're rolling past this motorcycle or past, past this parked black car. Uh, and it will shoot you into the moon. Just, you know, this one right here. I'm not doing it because I'm doing a speedrun tutorial, but, you know, good time. So anyway, again, auto-scrollers, you can lose time. It's through, through no fault of your own. Uh, and then also, our goal is to do chain reaction explosions so that we can kill many, many enemies uh, without them shooting us. Because, again, our main goal is to prevent them from hitting us and extending the length of the auto-scroller and then also to take as little damage as possible. So again, explosion hit that black car. Good times. Yeah, otherwise just a nice uh, scenic stroll through New York City. When it comes to these motorcycles, you can free aim the targets. I'm choosing to auto aim these motorcycles. Uh, there's a second auto scroller we'll do later where I will opt to, to free aim. Free aiming this game is challenging. I mean, the way the chain reaction works is that uh, explosions are just instantly lethal in this game. In fact, it is actually possible for explosions to instantly kill the player inside the car. Uh, it has happened to me in specific contexts. It's pretty fun. But yeah, but this is a nice limo. We got a little 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 TV in there. We got some like champagne. You know, good times. I think in the lore of the game, the person driving the limo is like the girl we were rescuing from the goth nightclub, which is why we have to defeat the goths. Okay. Alright, anyway. Do not 
do not mash skip cutscene too quickly here. This is a place where the game will frequently crash. And there we go. Finish the first auto scroller. It, don't feel if you're playing this game and you die on, on one of these, like when you're first starting out, don't feel too bad. I definitely have died on that a few times. Anyway, it's off to a driving mission. All right, so this mission has some pretty interesting tech. This is a mission called Hard Cell, which has its own unique technology. Uh, you might remember earlier, I talked about tasks. Uh, tasks were a type of side mission where if you fail a main mission, you can do a task to get the lead for the next main mission. Uh, this game has a situation where the informant and the location of the next mission are the same place. So what that means is that we can fail this mission in a particular manner and then choose to visit informant, but the scripting of the game will panic and immediately have us start the next mission instead of doing an informant task. So pretty useful for us. Yeah, yeah. So the way this works again, we're going to go. So the, what we're supposed to be doing is extorting three shop clerks. But well, we're going to intentionally fail this. We're going to put this man on the ground. Whoop. Goes right down. Exit the store. And then we're going to blow up our truck. This makes us fail the mission. And then so we say visit informant and hooray. It is the next mission. <laughs> hooray. Easy peasy. Okay, so this is one of, I think this is probably the most challenging thing in the game. I would say like for me learning this game, this was the last thing that I had to like get consistent before I could really, you know, live, live my full, my full true crime New York City life. I've t mentioned a few times before that if you do an attack while falling out of bounds, uh, you're able to cancel fall damage. Clipping out of bounds here, if you clipped out of bounds without doing an attack, you will die. You will 100% die. In fact, I might, I might even just demonstrate it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to fall to my death. Well, okay. Well, if you fall back in bounds, that's not useful though. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, True Crime New York City, for making me look like a clown instantly. Uh, now I'm, okay, now I'm, now I'm challenged. I gotta, so what's supposed to happen is that you're not going to fall back in bounds. There we go. This is what's supposed to happen. The place that we're trying to get to, way out of bounds. So how do we how do we avoid that? The answer is we do a heavy punch combo once we get partially out of bounds. So again, holding down shift to engage in the auto aim stage. And then we want to just be like a little bit out of bounds and then start mashing numpad nine to do our heavy punch combo. And there we go. I fell all the way down, but the whole time I was in the, oh. Hey, Good Rich Games is here. Good Rich Games is a developer who has kindly showed up before in, in my stream and, and here. So, yo, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> thank you. Thank you once again for uh, giving me this game to speedrun. Uh, all right. So, anyway, I did that. I did that uh, canceling of the fall damage there. Again, as you fall out of bounds, you start doing a heavy punch combo and you, uh, you're able to nullify all the fall damage. And then we get back in bounds right over here. Uh, you know, I haven't actually been able to reproduce that recently, uh, Stens, but uh, I should mention that actually. Uh, I've been told that there is a risk that if you, uh, those sofas in the top room, that if you punch the sofas after punching the cushions off, that it can crash the game. I actually haven't done it in a while, and I probably, I don't know, if, if it <laughs> it'd be tempting to try and do. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Obviously, there's a risk of soft locking there. I mean, risk of not soft locking. There's a risk of just crashing the game. Um, but yeah. anyway, once again, auto. We're gonna sh free aim this barrel to kill those two guys, and then just auto aim and wiggle around the mouse to take care of everyone else. And remember, when you have a held weapon and you go to interrogate, the held weapon just pops out. So you don't, you don't need to put your pistol away. And there you go, interrogation. And then you, off you go. 
All right, so that, that was probably like individually the hardest clip. Uh, this next level, I would say, is likely individually the hardest level for, for a speedrunner learning the game, which is a level called Human Cargo. Uh, this has a few a few different tricks which can soft lock the level. Uh, there, the start to this level is not close to the street, so we go ahead and flash our badge to grab the taxi that we arrived in. Uh, that allows us to get over to the start of the, of the mission. All right, this is gonna be one of the missions where we don't have a uh, we don't have our pistol, but it's okay. We don't really need it anyway. All right, so we have a bunch of doors with these uh, these wheels on them. Generally speaking, our goal is to not have to interact with any of those. The first thing we're gonna do, first thing we're gonna do, is just jump around this wall. This is risky, but this, this time it's pretty easy to do. There you go, just jump around it. For this section up here, there is two options. One is to clip through the wall. Clipping through the wall is difficult because at this point, our only option is to use the auto aim clip. So we would have to get rid of this guy on the left before doing it. I am going to opt to press the control panel to bring down the crate and just walk around. So again, oh wow, he actually magnet hands me. Ideally, you can get up here without having to do this. Here, have this back. Ideally, you don't have to interact with him. All right, so this is the guy we're chasing. This is going to take a little bit of practice, but what we're going to do is we're going to stick ahead of him. We're supposed to be chasing him, but you know, we're speed running. We can get ahead of him. No big problem. The behavior here is tricky. All right, so right now that guy is about to get up, up on me. And when he gets to that line, you see there's a crease in the floor. As soon as I see him get to that line, I'm going to hit E to go up the ladder. The idea is, is that I want both him and me to be climbing the ladder around the same time. What's ordinarily supposed to be happening in the level is that you're chasing him and he's pulling up the ladders behind him so you can't actually follow him up. But, you know, it's a speed run, so we don't, we don't want to deal with that. So this one is, it's pretty easy to get this one. There's going to be a second ladder after this one that is more challenging to get. Uh, but good news, there is a backup strat. So I'm going to try and get the double ladder. Uh, even if I do get it, I'm probably going to show off the backup strat anyway, just because getting the double ladder can be challenging, uh, especially if you're just new to the game. So again here, all right, do that. He's going to climb up. Oh, no, he isn't. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Well, that was weird. All right. Weird timing. Okay, so good news. I got it. I got it, right? So I should note, uh, if you if you climb up the ladder too early, he just won't climb up the ladder. Like his, his AI is set to sort of only go up the ladder and pull up the ladder after him if you're there. So if you're already up above, he's not going to do it. He's just going to stand there by the ladder and, and wait for you. Uh, so it is possible to climb back down the ladder and then immediately climb back up it and still you still stay with him. However, there is a risk that you will soft lock the mission and he will get stuck infinitely climbing the ladder. Um, and he's just sort of, he just will, he'll just be there kind of just doing his thing, not ever moving up, just sort of stuck in the middle of the ladder. If that happens, again, I should mention, if that happens, what you do, what you do is you pause the game you go into the case select screen and then you go to the mission you're on, which will be noted with, with this yellow icon. So uh, that is actually a pretty cool thing. This is a thing that makes the game pretty forgiving for a new runner is that if you do soft lock a mission, if you do die, whatever, you can just instantly pause, case select, go to the mission you're on. And it's, it's pretty convenient, pretty straightforward in that respect. So anyway, I got, I got double ladder. I got the second ladder successfully. And you might think like, oh, the lat rules, BMC. You can just go over here and interrogate him. Unfortunately, there's a script. The script says I can't interrogate him. I got to do other things first. So what I would normally do is I would jump across here. I'd walk over those crates, go up there. I press that switch over there and activate things. 
because, you know, this is a tutorial, I'm going to show off the backup strat for what happens if you don't get the second ladder. So I'm going to go ahead and fall back down here. Whee! So anyway, if you don't get the second ladder, climb. You want to clip through here. <clears throat> and then we're going to do, do, you know, do, do things as intended. I mentioned before we don't want to interact with these doors. In order to open one of these doors, you have to do this three times. You can't really do it if you have an enemy on top of you. Yeah, see, it won't let me interact with them, so that's why I'm trying to bait him, bait him back. Instead of fighting with them. That man just fell. He just died. Poor safety practices. Alright, so once you do it three times, the door opens. Again, you could spend time throwing these guys off, but there's really no reason to do it. It is possible to get through here without having to deal with too many of them. And again, that's typically what you're going to do. Ideally, though, of course, you get the second ladder. You don't have to deal with any of this. But again, I wanted to show off the backup strats. So coming, doing this backup strat spawns a bunch of enemies. If, if I had just gone forward, I would only have spawned those two enemies. All right, so some important notes here. All these guys are going to follow me. However, if you want, if you want a risk-free time, there's health here, and these enemies can't actually come over here. They, they just, their AI does not let them. Now, a thing that you can do to accelerate this process is you can come over and press the button again. Pressing the button again, uh, if you are able to do it, and I wasn't able to do it there. I actually got interrupted before, uh, before it came over. Is that it'll, it'll actually cause the crate to come back? It'll come towards the edge sooner. Once you get onto that crate, that's pretty much the, uh, it activates the next part of the level. All right, story time. Important, important story time. Yeah, this place is not OSHA safe. It is, it is a bit of trivia on the internet that the Xbox version of this game cannot be, or it is difficult, if not impossible, to be humanly completed. And I am here to tell you the truth which is that it can be humanly completed. And <clears throat> there's a trick to it. So this is, this is a wrestling minigame. Guy's going to hop down, and we're going to have to press two buttons to push him. They're going to press seven to push. Numpad seven. Sometimes it'll be numpad nine, it'll switch. Sometimes, maybe. This is random. No? Okay. All right. Well, that's... I, I love it when the game just exposes me as a fraud. Yeah, you know, it's, it's perfect every time. So, let's say... Let's say... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time. I was actually looking for an Xbox controller so I could, so I could show something. Aha. No, wait, wait. I got one. I actually have an OG Xbox controller. Well, it's a fake one, but... Okay, so... If you're playing on, if you're playing on an Xbox, the two buttons that you're using to, to push this guy are A and B. All right? When, the, when you get to the throw prompt, when you get to the throw prompt, it's going to tell you to press X to throw him. On the Xbox version of the game, on the Xbox version of the game, that... Win input window for throw to end the wrestling mini game is like frame perfect. It is infinitesimally small. I, I don't think a human can reliably press it. What is not clear from playing the game is that you can continue mashing A and B, the push buttons, while you're mashing uh, X. Okay? So again, to be clear, what you want to do if you're playing this game on Xbox is you want to Never, never stop pressing A and B. Never, never stop pressing A and B. Even when you're trying to get that throw input, keep doing it. And you'll get it eventually. It might take like a minute. But it will happen. Uh, technically, right now, the console speedrun world record for this game is on Xbox. But that's just because, again, I did a few, few runs as a goof. Uh, but I wanted to put that information out there in case people are trying to speedrun this on Xbox. Uh, is that... You can do that mini game. You can do it consistently. That's the tech. Uh, to do, do enjoy it. You know, do 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 live your life. It is as you just saw from me doing it on PC 
on PS2, GameCube, yes, even on GameCube, it's trivial, it's a trivial mini game. Yeah, so I, I actually don't know what the history. So the the GameCube and Xbox ports were done by Exact Entertainment, and then the PC port was done by Aspire, who is still around today, and in, in the news. Not always for good reasons, but I don't know why that is. I'm not. I don't know the behind the scenes of the Kotaro remake, so I'm not going to say anything. Um, but I, the Xbox version of this game is honestly, besides that mini game thing, pretty solid. It's like actually. Uh, that I would probably say, like in terms of intended experience, the second best experience after the uh, after the PS2 game, after the PS2 version. All right, here's a save and load that we're going to do. So I'm going to save the game. You have two options here. You can either load back to the precinct, or you can drive the car back to the street and get a taxi. Um, I always just do the load because it's it's the question is do you do you want to you want to get do you want to get a taxi in front of the precinct or do you want to get a taxi out on the highway next to the dock? And that's just sort of, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. I should mention that if this game ever switched over to in-game time, that would be a dicier proposition since obviously doing a save and load reduces the amount of in-game time or time without loads. But, you know, who, who, who times their games using time without loads anyway? Not me. <laughs> but let me tell you, all of the games that I speed run are so forsaken that no one wants to deal with that stuff. <laughs> it's it's not, not a problem I experience uh, very often. Uh, that's, it's, it's a life. It's a choice. Uh, all right. So we are, we're closing in on the ending sequence of the Shadow Tong family. We're about to enter the KZ Fru Memorial Crime Cave where KZ Fru once jumped to his death. Rest in peace, KZ Fru. Uh, we have our pistol here, but what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the assault rifle from this man instantly. This is a bottomless pit. If you fall in there, you will die. Just like KZ Fru. Um, oh, actually, no. I didn't mean to pick up that guy's weapon. You want to pick up uh, the, the, the assault rifle that's here. I mentioned before that you move faster by shooting or auto-aiming. There's a lot of enemies in here. So auto-aiming can be perilous because the auto-aim will face you in the direction of the enemy. And in this level, that means you'll usually be walking straight off a cliff. Not great. So we're going to generally be pretty free about using ammo to activate the fast walking state. You're going to see me do that here. Uh, we're generally going to try and clear enemies before we jump across with this assault rifle. You can get on these uh, on these pulleys using either the zip lines using either E or space to jump. Once you're clear of enemies, you can do shift auto aim. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you want to activate a fast walk state right as you get on a ladder, and that'll make you climb the ladder very quickly. So again, I'm gonna walk up here, hit shift just before I get to the ladder, and press E. Oh no, no, that's terrible. There we go. All right, so there you go. That's a fast ladder climb. You want to be at like the height of your fast walk when you get on the ladder, so that way you can get a fast ladder climbing animation. Uh, a note about this one, do not hold shift when you get to the top of this ladder because there will be enemies that you'll lock onto and that you will just like walk off the edge and die. I've, I've done it a bunch. That guy, so a bunch of these guys often stand behind yellow barrels, so that is advantageous to free aim them and take care of them that way. All right, three guys will spawn here. Again, they're going to hide behind yellow barrels, so you can just take care of them that way. Um, an important note about uh, regular walking versus fast walking. Fast walking generally does not let you grab onto ledges. So if you want to handle, if you want to handle this gap, this is an actual jump. This is an honest to goodness platforming jump. We have to jump over this gap. If you do not respect it, it will kill you. <laughs> It looks like a tiny little gap, right? But no, it actually will kill you. Um, so I recommend falling out of the, the run and gun state and then running forward and jumping. If for whatever reason you, you come up short, being in the regular walking state means that you will grab the ledge and climb up. And like this game is pretty generous with climbing up. So you, you want to do that. 
Um, this next part's gonna come at you fast. Uh, be ready. All right, so we're gonna loop the first hit of our heavy punch combo. Uh, that way, we don't knock him down and we immediately get him onto the second phase of the fight. What is going on with the sound? Uh, voice volume is turned to zero because if you have voice volume turned to zero, uh, it skips all the voice lines, which is particularly useful for interrogations. Uh, an important note about what I'm doing climbing this wall, you generally want to stick to the right side of the wall. If you don't stick to the right side of the wall, there is a risk that uh, that enemy's pathing will mess up and he'll walk off and fall to his death. And so... <laughs> what? what? You don't want that to happen because if he dies, you fail the mission. So generally, you want to stick to the right side of these climbable walls. And then also, when you get to these pipes where you're crossing, you want to jump over smoke to reduce the amount of, or the steam to reduce the amount of damage you're taking. Oh, I'm, I got distracted looking at chat. Bad. Oh, we got fast box. Oh, I think we got fast boxes. All right, so this is kind of exciting. I don't... <laughs> Good Urge Games, I don't know if you've seen this before. Uh, this is extremely funny. Uh, so we have bo boxes that are spawning at an accelerated rate. I don't know why this happens, but what it means is that when we get to the top, there's just going to be a huge mass of vibrating boxes for some reason. And they're going to be really loud if we stand in them. I don't know why this happens. It's a little inconvenient because, you know, the boxes are spawning faster, so you have to spend more time moving sideways than moving forward. Uh, but mostly it's just, it's just kind of weird. Uh, you know, <laughs> mostly it just, just kind of happens. But anyway, uh, there's also safety health. If you took too much damage from Steam or, or from the fight in the beginning, uh, there's health behind those, those valuables. Uh, so you can go ahead and help yourself to some health before going on to the final part of, of the level. Glad I was able to show off the, bo the boxes. Uh, so again, we're going to do heavy punch combo, heavy punch loops here for this final section. Uh, if we are able to loop him, we will probably run out of stamina. So that we'll, when we get there, we'll, we'll... I'll show you what happens. So you see there's a blue bar next to the character, and I have to fill that bar by wiggling around. Uh, so that's sad, but once we get out, once, we, <laughs> once we're done being stunlocked, we can go back to punching him. I'm glad I picked up health. So if he starts blocking, you can do a radial to knock him down and then get five kicks and then run away because he always does a wake up attack and then go back to punch looping him. And then we get run over by a train, which doesn't actually do that much damage. And then the level ends. You know, I, I haven't I haven't suffered a crash from the, the boxes clipping into each other like that, with the sound effects. Um, but I, I have had it happen on PC and GameCube. It happened to me like 100% of the time on GameCube, but I've seen other players in GameCube not have it happen to them. All right. So we are now done the third crime family. We're on to the President's Club, the fourth crime family. There is a finale mission, but again, most of the game is dealing with these crime families. Yeah, sometimes, look, you know, he's a very, he's very good at what he does. Okay, so this is going to be a level where we just have our pistol and we're just going to run and gun through it. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to be convenient to shoot enemies that are in front of us, but of course, if an enemy's not in front, holding down shift becomes uh, not advantageous because what, what happened right there where I turned around and started shooting an enemy that I didn't want to. Uh, shoot out this glass to get through and then immediately climb the ladder, hopefully get a fast ladder climb. This guy has a weapon that we're going to want to go ahead and take. Usually he'll have either a 50 or another type of pistol that's more powerful than our normal pistol because we have to kill these four guys in order to progress. And if we have a 50, it's a one-shot kill for everyone. Now, we have to do a disarm on this guy. Uh, he's got a big minigun. 
So we just want to go ahead and shoot him in the leg. And then once we do that, we're able to interrogate him as normal. And then make sure to run and gun all on the way out too. Because we gotta we gotta walk all the way back to a do the, the door over here in order to exit. Uh, you know, that's a good question, Albert. We'll get to that. We'll get to that shortly. I, I will be sure to address the, the lasers and can we move slowly under them? All right, so a similar thing is going to happen here where we're going to go to the end of the level and interrogate. Uh, this is going to be one where we clip out of bounds instantly. So we start the level, immediately turn around and clip out of bounds uh, at this door. And then turn back around. You can see there, there are enemies waiting for us, but we don't want to deal with them. Uh, there's also like a, a thing where you have to like jump through lasers. I got to be honest, I've never done this. I've never done this level casually. So I've, I've, I've watched, I watched one other person do this. I've never done it myself. I've, it tells you to go slowly under lasers, but I've never done it. Uh, then you go over here and you jump up into the level and here's the guy that you want to interrogate. So the reason that you keep shooting the gun is because you, you move faster when you're in a run and gun state. So I, I use the gun to clip out of bounds but also I keep shooting because I have infinite ammo and shooting puts me in a faster walking state. <laughs> game on, yeah, I gotta tell you folks, uh, this, this game is just like this. Oh, is the actual, okay. Yeah. I mean, Jade star, Jade star is a regular of mine. So Jade star would actually be able to identify unusual audio. If that if that's if there's actually an issue there, that might actually be real. Anyway, I'm gonna find a taxi like I usually do. Okay, let me just go ahead and. Let me just go and do that real quick. Hopefully that, that helps the issue. Okay. I mean, this game is unusual. I don't, it could be something too between the game capture and, um, and what's going on OBS. Uh, I do use game capture for this game and you know, it is a, a mid 2000s game. So I, I, strange things can happen sometimes with game capture and OBS and older games. Alright, well, let's get on here. We got we got a all right. Well, this will be a great opportunity to see what the audio is like because y'all are about to hear a song that was commissioned for this game. There's a lot of licensed music in this game. We generally haven't heard it too much because uh, we've not been in cars. We just haven't been in cars. So, you know, we don't really hear the licensed music as much. Uh, but here we're going to hear a track that I, I think was commissioned for this game. I've been telling people for years this track was commissioned for this game. I hope that's true. Um, I'd like to imagine that it was. A track called Homicide Chat by Sam Scarfo. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be the same thing that we always do. Oh, it's still happening? All right. Um, maybe I should just restart the game then or something? I don't... Okay. Okay. I will do that. All right. Selecting a different window, bam, and then go back to there. All right, and then back to the game stream. All right, hopefully this will help remedy the issue. Okay. 
It sounds better? All right, good. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> but glad to hear. Right, the folks need to hear Homicide Chat. That is very important. It's crucial, essential audio to the, <laughs> the experience of playing this video game. I mentioned earlier that when you're doing these auto scrollers, um, you usually want to auto aim, but sometimes it can be advantageous to free aim. These guys in sport bikes, you generally want to go free aim. Uh, it, it's because they have pretty big hitboxes, and uh, you know, it, and the, sp the sport bikes can be surprisingly challenged, especially for where auto aim sits when you're shooting them. That guy also sits at a really bad spot in the truck because the auto aim pretty much just puts him right in harm's way. But yeah, same principles as before. We're going to shoot things that are in front of us or might interfere with our path of travel. So for example, this guy is in front of us, so we want to take care of this guy first. Uh, and then we know up ahead we're going to be making a right turn. So we're going to shoot out the truck on our right first to make sure that it does not interfere with the right turn that we're going to make coming up. Oh, okay. So don't think the only commission could be wrong. Yeah, because the thing is, like, I could find very little information. So, like, for example, Sam Scarfo is on Spotify, but like this song is not on Spotify. So, like, I was really like uncertain. You know, again, it could be some sort of licensing deal, right? Like, even if it wasn't for the game, there could have been something else going on that that Sam Scarfo wouldn't put the song on on Spotify. There's all sorts of things that can happen to music licensing, but. You know. I guess it has a, has a mystique, you know, it's a song that people don't know. Alright, so that's the last set of motorcycles and we get one more set of garbage trucks. Ideally, one of the first ones we shoot will block the other ones. And we definitely want to make sure to shoot the ones on our on our right because we're going to make a left turn and we don't want to get the, the left turn blocked. All right, so then in order to finish the level, we have to free aim this guy. If we try to auto aim, it'll lock onto the center of the limo and that's not going to end the level. We got we to gotta free aim this guy. But again, important reminder, if you're trying to play this, the PC version of this game with a modern computer and a modern mouse, you want to either put your DPI up way high, 9,000 DPI, or you want to set your pulling rate very low, like a, like, a, like an 8 millisecond pulling rate. You cannot take taxis right now. We're on a timed sequence, a time driving sequence. If you take a taxi, it'll tell you that public transit is too slow, which is funny in New York City. But we're going to drive. We're going to take a cop car. Cop cars are, on average, the most common fast vehicle. Uh, and then we're going to go over to 56th Street, make the right on the 56th, and drive to our destination. Uh, but yeah, a reminder, of course, once again, we have the camera facing the other way uh, in order to prevent traffic from spawning in front of us. Uh, since the map is a grid, it's you know pretty trivial to drive in a straight line looking the other way. Just <laughs> you don't, don't turn. It's simple. If you have a sport bike, so again, sport bikes are the fastest vehicle. Uh, if you have a sport bike, what you do at the end here is a little different because you can't crash through the fence. Of course, if you have a car, you just go through the fence. Easy peasy. Uh, shoot out these things in order to kill these guys. And then we're going to we're gonna do a special little trick. Uh, we're going to attempt to do what's called a super mega jump. There's two things that are going to happen. So I'm going to line myself up. I'm going to get that grate in the corner. And then I'm going to hold D to the right. Oh, and then we're just going to get stuck here for a while. <laughs> All right. Sometimes, usually you'll get a clip of one kind or another. There we go. Come on. No? Yeah. Again, so I'm doing the auto aim, auto aim clipping. Oh. All right, folks, that is the third time I've mega jumped live on uh, on the GDQ channel. There's like a 5% chance of that happening. 
Uh, that's very unusual. Okay. I'm, I'm, I might actually go. Okay. This is a tutorial. This is a tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to do this and I'm going to restart the level because you need to see what the level looks like. If you don't get mega jump, getting mega jump is very good. Obviously, of course, that's great, but uh, that is not going to happen. Typically we do. We do not have a consistent way to create that result. So we, we are not going to do, I'm going to go ahead and advance this. And then once I show you, cause I need to show you an important difference between mega jumping and not mega jumping. Uh, so if you come out here and you ha and you mega jump successfully, he's going to get in the car and then the car is going to be, is going to be operational, but we can blow up the car by shooting out its gas tank and then come down here to interrogate him. So there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and restart the level though, because it is, it is essential. <laughs> it is necessary that you see what it looks like if I don't successfully super jump for, for the purposes of making a good tutorial. So let's say, let's say you go for, you go for it. It doesn't work. Okay. I've never super jumped onto the top of the printing machine before. All right, we got to <laughs> Can I cut? Can I clip out of bounds here? I might just clip back out of bounds. All right, no, y'all need to see what this looks like. This can't possibly happen this many times. Um, this is fine. This is fine. We're going to do this. It's going to, no, it's not going to look. It can happen twice. It's not going to happen three times. This is going to be fine. I'm going to show you how this normally works. This is going to be fine. All right. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. This is what normally happens like 90% of the time. The percentages are changing in real time because of how often I'm doing it now. This is what normally happens when you try to clip through that wall. The guy that we're trying to interrogate is over here running into the corner for some reason. I don't know what his problem is. Don't worry about it. The backup strat for when super jump doesn't work is that we're going to push this barrel over here. A note about these barrels. They may look like barrels, but only one side of them can you actually stand on. So the bottom side is the real side is the real part of it. So we want to jump off the bottom part of it and get onto this uh, thing up here. Once we jump up here, we're going to go press numpad five to go into precision aim, shoot out the truck. We're going to preemptively destroy the truck. Once we do that, we're going to auto aim out of bounds clip to our right. And actually it's a pretty good, what, what you can do, it's a pretty good reference. The, like your, your horizontal position for where you were aiming at the, the gas tank of the truck is an excellent reference for that out of bounds for that clip back in. Cause you can just clip back in like this. And then you do, then you do the rest of the level almost the same. But of course, at this point we've already destroyed the truck. So there you go. Same thing as before, but now the truck is already destroyed. He's going to get into it and then he's going to immediately fall out of it because <laughs> that's what happens when you get into a bombed out truck. It just doesn't, doesn't work that way. So he's going to run to the same position and we're going to interrogate him and we're going to end the level. Uh, no, there are, okay. So there are supposed to be some mafia guys there shooting. I'm not sure why they didn't spawn. There is a risk that you could take damage as you're exiting the level there. Uh, it's never killed me yet. And it hasn't that time. Uh, is super jump actually faster? Uh, the answer is yes. Just because you don't spend time traversing the level. If you saw from the super jump example, the amount of time it takes to shoot the gas tank after you climb up is like still pretty trivial. Like, you're not losing that much. Like the time you're losing there is the time that he spends driving forward instead of immediately running to the point where you interrogate him, the, the enemy at the end of the level. So it, it's still advantageous to super jump just because the like <laughs> jumping across the level is really fast. It saves time that you'd otherwise spend walking across the level. It's pretty good. I mean, it's also swag as hell. So that, that also is important. Vital to speed running. 
Uh, what's also important to speedrunning this game is getting a taxi. This is always like a brutal part to get a bad taxi too, because it's like at the end of the run, you might have like a good time going and then you're just not getting... I'm seeing taxis drive away from me, which is... This is just what happens. This is also one of the reasons you see me like walking in the traffic to try and like get a taxi that's spawning behind me. There we go. Uh, an important note about this. So some of these markers can be kind of difficult to click on. This particular marker for this mission has a subway icon like right on like see like right here you think you're clicking on the mission marker but you're actually clicking on the subway you gotta make sure you gotta look at the bottom text there is it a is it a ripoff i don't think it's a ripoff i think this game is a legitimate competitor to 3d era gta you know i think i think iteration is a normal part of the artistic process <laughs> Should have put the super jump stamina meter in, if only. But yeah. Oh no, there it is. That's the okay. That's the bad subway icon. That subway icon right there. That's the one. That's the one. Don't click on that. You got to click on the major case location. You you have you have all been warned. Do not click on the evil subway marker. That ruins your run. All right. So now we're in the finale sequence for the end of the President's Club. Uh, we're, we're, we are without a gun at this point, so we need to scavenge weapons from the level. You can clip through that door, but for, for the purposes of speed, it's still better to go sort of as intended. Pick up a sword, shift, left click to throw it. Instant kill on this guy. His weapon went out of bounds, which can happen. Usually you pick up his weapon and you're good, but if, he, if, his, if he, his weapon falls out of bounds, you just got to sword another guy. Unfortunately, I, I would have rather have two fifties there, but it gave me it just gave me ammo for the fifty. I mean, I'm sure you looked at GTA a lot, but like, look, as someone who's played a lot of open world action games, I like to, I like to appreciate the differences between all that. I mean, the, the series that got me into speedrunning was Just Cause, and I've played a lot of Just Cause One, so I don't know. Comparing and contrasting different, like I don't think GTA clone is even a derogatory term. Doesn't really bother me. I think it's cool to have a genre. I like genres. I like playing similar games and understanding them. So here, the most important part of this fight, this section is like, remember, you have limited ammo. And if you run out of ammo, you will be in a bad, you will have a bad time. <laughs> like you will have a very bad time because you will have your fists at a gunfight and you'll probably die. So you got to make sure that as you're going along, you're picking up enough weapons to continue fighting. And that usually means picking up one or two weapons per room, depending on, on like what ammo drops you're getting. Here I'm getting ammo for 50s. Uh, and at this point, there is one more guy uh, at the end here. I should note, you can clip through. So what we're about to do is we're gonna hit the switch. Switch is gonna open up this gate. You can clip through this gate, but the elevator isn't active until you open the gate. So clipping through the gate is fruitless because the elevator is not active. Uh, a reminder again, you always want to be fast walking. Here I'm using the shift fast walk, which is the auto aim fast walk. Uh, once I get closer to the exit of the level, I'm going to switch over to shooting. Oh, an important note. I've talked a little bit a few times about differences between the PC version and the console version. This sequence right here is an example of a situation where because you're moving more slowly in the console versions, if you were playing on console, you would shoot two of the guys in this room before proceeding. Because I'm playing on a PC, the animations are, are sped up that I'm just going to run through the room. But again, this is, this is a, an example of a difference. So here, I'm moving so fast that these guys can't kill me. Uh, okay, so this fight, phase one of this fight, you have to use a weapon uh, because you need to destroy his armor. Once you run out of, uh, once you, that sword breaks, you have to break bamboo to pick up uh, a stick. 
And then that knocks him into the second phase of the fight. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about about like all of arts and science is that it turns out everyone is building on stuff that came before. And that's pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and try and uh, heavy punch combo him. If he doesn't just kill us. Wow. So again, what we're doing here is we are looping the first and second hits of the heavy punch combo. If we did the third hit, if we just mashed heavy punch, it would knock him down. But we are maximizing our DPS by just stopping the heavy punch combo, but, but we're still able to hit him with another first hit of the heavy punch combo before, uh, before you can fall out of the combo. Anyway, here's a sword. And you can do the same... So that same idea of heavy punch combos also works with melee weapons as we were about to discover. So here I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, I'm going to try to do the same thing. Nope. All right, so you see, same thing. And then just throw the sword in the night. That part's not important, but the... Again, you're doing a series of first hits of a heavy attack combo. All right, so we're almost on to the final mission in the game. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and grab a taxi as we have been all game. Once we... Oh, that was totally a taxi and I despawned it. Uh, this particular taxi, like the... It turns out that the default location... <laughs> The location that the cursor spawns at is actually the case location of the final mission. So that's pretty convenient. So once you get this final mission taxi, you can just sort of mash through it, right? Because your 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 uh, your mouse cursor is already there. Uh, and this will start the finale. It turns out that the crooked cop was our mentor who we thought died at the beginning of the game. Uh, he is trying to escape on the subway, and we just got to chase him down. So we just run forward through the subway cars. Uh, there is health. He will be shooting us, so it's often a good idea to get the health. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty much it. Once we get to uh, not this car, but I think the next car, it's going to activate a sequence where we have to hold down to run away. So I'm going to skip that cutscene, hold S, not do anything else. And this is pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, if you were timing it, if you were doing a real a real speed run, you would end time as soon as you got the fade out here and the load screen appeared. Uh, and that would be the end of True Crime, New York City, any percent. So hopefully. that... Yeah. God. No, you got... I was just going to say, hopefully that was, you know, that was sort of a useful, uh, useful live tutorial. You know, there's a lot of repetition between the interrogations, taxi yeah. RNG, and some of the combat. Uh, but, you know, I mean, certainly if anyone, anybody has any questions, you know, I... I Happy to spend a, a you know a few minutes here, uh, you know, answering any questions. Uh, otherwise, Discord is I'm in the Discord. I'm available wherever I'm available. Uh, I'm always happy to help people get into this game. Uh, so, I I was just gonna say uh, I felt like that was a really good tutorial. Um, you made not that there's a lot of complicated things, but you made everything very like it you explained everything really well made it all very straightforward uh you I, I feel like you did a great job and i mean the good news too is that and you know again i i mentioned uh that this game if you die you restart from the same mission there isn't anything like where you're, it, it isn't like a situation where you're trying to make some you're trying to make something persist over the course of the run like if you have a problem on a mission you pretty much can just go into case select and go right to the mission. If you're trying to practice a mission, like right now, you know, now that I finished the game, I could say like, wow, I'm just having a terrible time chasing down the guy on Martitian's flight. So let me just boot up that mission. It's got a mission selector right in it. And, you know, and you're right there right away, instantly practicing the mission. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a game that I think is really approachable. And really, like the the only barrier is getting the game again because unfortunately it's not available on digital distribution. But once you get the game, uh, you know it's really easy to practice and play. Um, and you know I think it's it's a pretty good time.
Uh, so, four questions, since I'm not seeing per- er, many from chat. I'll just open up with one. Go ahead. Um, what do you think is the best way to get into speedrunning? Not specifically this game, just in general. I mean, I think uh, I, there's two approaches to that. One, the most common answer, of course, is to speedrun a game you love, right? Find the game you love. You, you can just play over and over and over and over, or you want to discover to play a new way. For me... That was Just Cause 3. I 100% of Just Cause 3, but I still wanted to keep playing Just Cause 3. So I said, how can I do that? And of course, the answer was getting into speedrunning. Just Cause 3 was the first speedrun that I did back in, in January 2016. Um, the other p- part of it too, honestly, is also to find what about speedrunning might be interesting to you. Uh, I generally tend to be a person who likes to run older, janky PC games. Uh, it's improved my knowledge of the genre, my knowledge of how things work in that area. I've found interesting speed runs. Um, I've run games that people haven't run before. I tend to be the sort of person who likes to find stuff that people haven't tried to run and try to run it. That interests me. You know, that's, that's a way that I stay engaged with speed running. Um, and I say that as an example of an alternative to thinking that like get, being having, having world record is not the end all and be all of speed running, right? You want to always engage with it on your own terms. And I think that is, for me, an example of that is that it's just it's a way for me to explore games and see what they're made of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and like you said, like uh, it, it's important that it's something you're going to love or like enjoy doing, right? Like <laughs> speedrunning should be something you enjoy. Absolutely. I do want to mention one person. I saw it in chat, and it is not something that, that annoys me. In fact, it's something that is very funny to me which is that I do often, for years now, when I do speedrun marathons, people do ask if I look like the dentist from The Hangover, or they remark that I do. And I guess I do. People keep saying it. <laughs> um, I, I, you, I feel like you answered a lot of questions about the game. <laughs> um. I mean, there's any repeats because I know people yeah. are coming and going as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. So certainly, if there's anything that I explained, but maybe someone came in late that they want to hear about, you know, I'm certainly happy to do that. Does skill? Yeah, oh, here's one question: Does skill in GTA translate to each other speedrun wise, vice versa? I would say generally no. I have done speedruns of uh, Vice City, any percent no SSU, and also Vice City, any percent definitive edition, the the remasters that came out, and generally, I would say like. Beyond, you know, general proficiency in terms of like weird keyboard controls, because Vice City also does encourage numpad usage, I will say. Uh, but beyond that, I think the driving in Vice City has a much higher depth in terms of skill. Uh, so that's like a big part of speedrunning Vice City. Obviously, classic Vice City also has uh, the depth in terms of the uh, mechanics for doing replays and things like that. So uh, it's a pretty, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. Like, I think they're interested. They're related in that they're old PC games. Uh, but beyond that, look, does the driving translate, or does other you know skills translate? Not necessarily. Oh yeah, finding tech is really valuable too. Shout outs. Uh, I know uh, Jade Star has been in here. Jade Star found a lot of tech for Just Cause One, uh, and so like if you want to just like play a game and goof around and find tech. Speedrunners will you first off that makes you a speedrunner and also speedrunners will love you. Yeah. Which is an important thing like if you're not interested in doing a speedrun of a game but you want to participate, yeah, you can you can find tech, you can still join the community. Um most speedrunning communities are very welcoming and would be happy to have more people helping uh the game or just, you know, talking about it you know you talk about strats something like that just any any more people helps progress games <laughs> so yeah absolutely uh do you have anything you want to talk about while we wait for more questions to come in i know uh, you talked I mean, about in terms uh, of 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 playing this game as i mentioned before like you can do speed runs of this game on console versions I would expect those versions to bottom out around like, like if, if, if I think my estimate is that if I put effort into attempts of the console versions, they would probably uh, bottom out around like 90 minute speed runs. I think, I think maybe 
Um, as I mentioned, the GameCube is the one that misses the most in terms of technology. You have to know the trick for the wrestling minigame with the Xbox version, but otherwise the Xbox and the PS2 versions, pretty much all the out of bounds works. The city's crime skip works. Um, generally things like most of the tech works like, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you saw a lot of this and you said, oh, well, this is broken because it's the PC port. The truth is, the truth is, it's, it's all the versions of this game are like that in terms of <laughs> clipping out of bounds, in terms of some of the sequence breaks in the scripts and stuff like that. Uh, it works across all versions. There may be, and I will say this, there may be console specific tech that I don't know about because I'm the only person who's really done any percent runs on console and I basically just applied the PC skips to console just to see if they worked, you know, just kind of as a, as a, as a fun joke. Um, and you know, again, they, they mostly worked. So, uh, but yeah, if you wanted to get into those, uh, it is a different subcategory in the leaderboard and I'm sure, you know, that, that would be one way to approach it. And of course, if you want to speed run the fastest version, that is the PC version and, and you can do that. We do have a, uh, an auto splitter for it. So that convenience is there. If you want to get into it, you can get all that from the speedrun.com page from the, um, you know, from the discord. My understanding is I think that those things have been linked a few times in chat. And I think also if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm pretty sure they get linked in the show notes as well, or in the, uh, the, the channel, oh, yeah. uh, the video description. So, uh, click there as well. We'd be happy to see you. Yeah, there's an auto splitter. There is an auto splitter for this game. So you can definitely, uh, you, you will enjoy that luxury, which I don't always enjoy. As I mentioned before, most, most of the games I run are like uh, haunted and no one's touched them. And uh, we see what happens. <laughs> And, and so that, that I guess that's a, that is another good point that you brought up uh, earlier, uh, and uh, I kind of want to touch on. Um, you don't have to like if you have a game you want to speedrun and nobody else speedruns it, you can just speedrun it. You don't oh, have yeah. to. You don't have to. You know, only speedrun games that other people do. You can be the first to speedrun it. Uh, maybe you'll be the first person, and other people will see it and get into it. Uh, or may maybe you're just the only one, but it's, it's, what's important is that you're having fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing I, I will say, I've had experience a lot of times now where uh, a number of games that I've run after making the, the leaderboard for it, it has caused another runner to surface. And like that runner does a way better job than I do. Uh, crazy Ivan for PS one that happened. A runner came up and really, really figured out how that game worked. 24, the game for PS two. I, I put together a, a, a one-off run of another runner showed up, put a ton of work into it, found really cool skips. So, um, you know, like, so, you know, in effect, I'm just sort of showing up and saying like, oh, I wonder if he can run this. And then once I, <clears throat> you know, blaze that trail, someone, you know, shows up and says, oh, well, I know all this cool stuff for it. And let me, let me share it. And that's how, you know, you, you build that interest, build that uh, interest in the run and, you know, potentially community even. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a, the same thing for me. Like, I definitely have a bunch of games where it's been like, I'll just do a run of it, you know, see how that goes. And then people come in later uh, and just destroy my time. And like, I, that's awesome. I'm glad somebody else, ha you know, ran this game and absolutely. had all of this tech that they, that I didn't know yeah. about. Because, I mean, for me, it's just, I get to learn more about the game now. Like, because of those yeah. runners coming out of the woodwork, I know more about how the game works. Um, would I still run this game if there were no taxis? Maybe not as much. Probably not as much. I will mention, I don't think True Crime Street Civil A has taxis. So there is a lot more driving around on the map in that game. I, I, I've, it's been a while since I watched the speed run of that. I haven't, I haven't touched that myself yet, but probably not as much. I feel like, you know, I feel like the fast travel enhances the experience. Like, I don't think, I don't think the driving is enjoyable <laughs> enough that I would like to speed run more if I spent more time driving. Uh, but you know, here's the thing also too. Like if, if you don't want to do the taxis, then like, then don't, you know, you can always do your own category. I, I think that's, um, I know I had an experience with an, with an indie game called Teardown where I liked some of the, the tech and I didn't like some of the tech. So I just ran it how I wanted to. And, uh, and then I submitted it to whatever the most appropriate leaderboard was. And that was pretty much the end of it. So, uh, you know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, again, the, the end, the end goal is to, uh, learn the game, have fun. Yeah. You don't have to 
constantly go for the world records if you don't want to. Some people like the uh, competitiveness of it. Some people don't. You know, it, it is a hobby where you can make your own fun. So make your own fun. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Uh, it doesn't look like we're getting too many more questions. Uh, so uh, do you have anything you want to say before we close out here? Uh, if you have any questions at all about True Crime in New York City, or also, frankly, if you look at my Spirit.com profile and you're interested in like literally any, I think I've probably I've put my hands on like 30-some games, and most of those games I'm like the sole representative of. If you're ever curious about anything, like I, I'm always available via Twitter or Discord. So please, please reach out. I'm always, always happy to talk about them, uh, especially if it's weird mecha games. That's like a particular fascination <laughs> of mine. So um, you know, very much happy to to share that fascination, and uh, and also you know, thank you for inviting me on. I, I've I have done live tutorials of this in the past, but uh, I, it's been years, and uh, and I actually now know about the console version. So. This this live tutorial is the best tutorial because it's got all the console information too as well. Uh, so you know, definitely will be sharing this with people in the future. So thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Uh, what I like about this show so much is that I get to talk with and have on runners who are extremely passionate about their game and just like want to show off their game and help people get into it. Uh, and that's amazing. So thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I really love the ability to try and help grow the community by doing this. So, uh, you know, huge shout out to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, with that being said, uh, since it doesn't look like there are any more questions, we should uh, we should close it out as it is getting a little late here. Uh, so again, thank you so much for uh, teaching the game. Uh, it was an incredible tutorial, like I said. Uh, we don't have any more shows tonight. Uh, we do have uh, tomorrow coming up, we will be having What's Faster followed by Grudge Match, which will be starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, just a few quick reminders. Uh, AGDQ 2023 online will be January 8th to the 15th. Uh, you can head over to gamesdonequick.com for more information on that. Uh, you can tweet at Games Done Quick to let us know what you're uh, hoping to see on the schedule. And then Fright Fatales is a one-day event coming up on the 23rd of October to celebrate the spooky season. Uh, it has dark, scary, and horror-themed speedruns from the Frame Fatales community. You can use exclamation Fright in Twitch chat to see the schedule there. Uh, with all that said, uh, we are going to be, you know ending the stream. Uh, we are going to be uh, raiding another speedrunner, so if you wouldn't mind just sticking around while we look for somebody to raid uh, and just uh, you know cheer them on in their speedruns. That would be awesome. Have a, great, have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching.